In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an RC circuit and we're going to be solving for the charge and voltage across the capacitors. And then we're also going to find the current and voltage drop through each resistor. So if we're taking a look at this circuit, we have a 30 volt source and it's going to move everything through a six ohm resistor. And then there's two parallel branches, one with a four ohm resistor and the second one with two capacitors. Now, initially, um, the current is going to run through both branches, but after an extended period of time, the charge is going to build up on the capacitors over here and then not allow any current through that branch. At that moment, we basically have a single loop that the electrons are flowing through. In that single loop, we have a 6 and 4 ohm resistor, which would have an equivalent or total resistance of 10 ohms. So if we just go ahead and use Ohm's law, we can say we have a total voltage of 30 volts and a total resistance of 10, which would then allow for three amps of current to flow. Now we know that when everything is flowing through that six ohm resistor, it's in a series, if you want to call it that, for that portion, because there's just a, there's just a single path, which means that there's for sure a total current of three amps flowing through it. Now, with that being said, if we rearrange Ohm's law, then we know that voltage equals current times resistance. In that case, we just multiply the three times the six, and then that would mean that there's a voltage drop of 18 volts across that six ohm resistor. Now, with that being said, um, if there's 18 volts being dropped across that first resistor, then there's gonna be a remaining 12 volts that need to be dropped through the next branch. So that branch would either be this branch over here or this branch over here. So we have a 12 volt voltage drop across this one. And we also have a 12 volt voltage drop across those two capacitors. And then before we move on, we'll go ahead and mark that this also has three amps of current flowing through it once these capacitors are all charged up. Now with those two capacitors, we're going to go ahead and add up the inverses of them. And we're going to say 1 over 5 plus 1 over 10 equals 1 over CT. Now, the reason why we add up the inverses of capacitors in a series is because they basically act similar to one big capacitor to where we might have a negative and a positive over here and a negative and a positive over here. And in the middle, the net charge is going to be zero and then the distance between the top and the bottom plate is increased, therefore decreasing the total capacitance. So if you use the inverse uh, method to adding them up and then finding your CT or CEQ, whatever you want to call it for the capacitance, that will give you the total. So let's go ahead and find the lowest common denominator, which is 10. And then that would be 3 over 10 equals the inverse and then you can basically just cross multiply these two and that would tell you that your total capacitance is 10 over 3 or 3 and a third all right so we know the total capacitance for both those capacitors combined is three and a third microfarads. And we can go ahead and find the Q value because we know the Q equals C times delta V. And we know the C is three and a third. And we know the delta V across that branch is 12 volts, what we found in right over there. So we just multiply this by 12. And then we get 40 microcoulombs. Now for capacitors in series, they both have the same charge. So I go ahead and I went ahead and marked 40 microcoulombs next to each of the capacitors. Now the next thing we need to find is the delta V across each of those. So all we have to do is take the capacitance for each individual one along with our uh, Q value. And then we can go ahead and solve for those delta Vs. Good luck. No, 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 no. 
All right, so we did a simple calculation. We knew the charge for each one was 40 microcoulombs, and then we set that 40 microcoulombs equal to the individual capacitance times the voltage, basically just divide, divided both sides by that capacitance. The micro part of it got dropped out. So it's basically 40 divided by five, and then we got a delta V of eight volts for the purple capacitor. And then we did the same thing for the other one, except 40 divided by 10. And then we got a delta V of four, which sums up to the 12 that's dropped across that branch. So when taking a look at a parallel circuit with capacitors in series, um, like I said before, we have basically a um, series circuit running over here. Once the capacitors become completely charged, when they become completely charged, we want to find the total capacitance by adding the inverses and setting it equal to one over CT or one over CEQ, whatever you want to label it. And then once we find that total capacitance, go ahead and use that value along with the delta V as we did in orange over here to find that total Q value. And the total Q value applies to each of the capacitors. Use that 40 for both of them. Do an individual calculation to find each of their delta Vs, and then the problem is complete. So if that was helpful in helping you find a bunch of different values for the resistors and capacitors in an RC circuit, thanks for watching and listening.